Um, final person in terms of supporting the DPLA uh, this morning is someone who has been uh, deeply active herself, but um, representing the American Library Association, the president, uh, Maureen Sullivan, is going to talk about supporting the DPLA in non-financial but absolutely crucial ways as well. Maureen. It's a real privilege for me to be the spokesperson for the American Library Association at this event and in the work that is happening to create the DPLA. It's particularly a privilege for me because since reading the first concept that I came across that really captured what our digital future would be like, and this was in an article written by John Palfrey in which he coined the term the digital plus world. I have been giving thought on a continual basis to what this is going to mean for libraries. It's also a privilege for me to follow this set of speakers where, as you've listened, you've heard them describe what I've come to call the promise of libraries transforming communities, which is one of the themes in my presidency. And this match of creating the DPLA at a time when so many of us as leaders in the American Library Association are seeking ways to very quickly advance the work of libraries in really meeting the needs of their communities is really a wonderful place to be. The American Library Association has about 60,000 members who work in all types of libraries and information organizations in North America, but we also have members around the globe. And these are individuals who have spent considerable amount of time doing the work that you've already heard suggested. Our members are creating digital content. They are making that digital content available on a regular basis to the broad spectrum of people who live and work in our communities. And these are also individuals who throughout their careers have sought ways to collaborate as well as cooperate with each other. So as the promise of this new entity, the Digital Public Library of America, is being realized, it creates the real opportunity for librarians and others who work in libraries to collaborate with others in our communities who are collecting and making available so many of the resources that are so critical to our cultural heritage. But it's also work that continues to enable the people who live and work in our communities to have the information that they need to make informed decisions. In other words, this is work that is critical to the future of our democracy. And as we continue to work in the Digital Plus world, it is critically important that we create the means to ensure that the content that is so important to an informed populace is available. And it's a real source of pride for me to be representing those libraries and the individuals who work in them, but also to have the privilege of being part of creating this organization. I never applied cautious to my optimism about this, but what I will share with you is a deep belief that this will happen. I have never been part of an effort before that has been so well designed to embrace and bring in people and give them opportunities to bring forth their best ideas. And every time I'm part of a DPLA activity, new ideas emerge that are really taking us forward. So I thank you for the opportunity that you've given me, John, and others who've been involved in this. And I make the commitment that the American Library Association and its members will be ready to be in the distribution business with the work that is happening here. Thank you so much. Maureen, thank you both for the support of your institution. We need every one of those 60,000 members pulling in the same direction, but your personal engagement, no one has worked harder on the governance work stream uh, as a volunteer than Maureen, and we're really grateful that you've rolled up your sleeve as an inst individual as well. Um, uh, I'm going to suggest to this panel that they um, slide off here as we thank them, and I'm going to welcome uh, Chairman Leach back to the microphone for one more moment, but please join me in thanking uh, this group. Thank you, Chair. I wanted to make one more comment, and it's about the word importance as well as optimism. Uh, last night we had a political debate, uh, and the moderator went from foreign policy to domestic and back and forth, and I want to mention one thing about foreign policy. Uh, if you think about this initiative, which is principally about America for Americans, it's more than that. 
Uh, cultural outreach is probably the single most important thing this country can be involved in to advance the national interest of the United States. I do not know of a greater foreign policy initiative than an American digital library because it will reflect to the world because the world will see it real American culture from all of these different libraries having all of these different ingredients, some of which are written words, some of which are objects, some of which are pictures. This will reflect American culture. And so I don't want anyone to think that this is not, that this, is, this may be American-centric, but it's about the American national interest as well. Thank you. <laughs> Chairman Leach, that is a perfect example, I think, of what Maureen just said, which is at every one of these meetings, we learn something new. And I had never thought about that angle, but it seems totally resonant uh, after hearing last night's debate as well.